So I'm going to talk about Unisoc. So first, a little bit about myself. So I'm Stefan Nilsson, I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Unisot. Before I started doing this, like four or five years ago, I worked as an SAP integration architect. So I've been in the in the industry for 30, over 30 years. Uh, and I saw the problems that all supply chains have to uh, connect between companies. Uh, and that's what I decided to do something about. So that's why I quit my job at Ernst & Young and starting building our solution. I've been working with blockchain since 2014, when I started building a proof of concept home in my garage, a vending machine, where I could pay with Bitcoin to that machine and got a box of sweet out. But the interesting thing was that I connected that to an SAP system, an ERP system. So when I paid to this machine, SAP created a sales order. That led to what today is Unisot, that I'm going to talk to you about. Unisot is a Web3 supply chain traceability system. So we are helping companies to trace their products, and by tracing their products, they can now prove the quality of their product. They can prove the ingredients, they can prove the sustainability, and that kind of things. So our vision is to be a global, uh, to, to provide global interoperability, as it's called, which means that all companies in supply chain should be able to interact, to, to exchange information in a secure and cost-efficient way. And that is a problem today. And uh, we want to enable them to be very sustainable and, and transparent. With, where, with their products. Our mission is to be the leader in this, to be the premium enabler of transparent and sustainable global supply chains. Just to give you some ideas about this industry, so of ERP system or supply chain management system, SAP is the biggest one, have a valuation of 157 billion. Next one is Oracle. 223 billions and GDA software is 4.4 billion. So it's, it's a big industry with big actors. And our goal is, of course, to come up there and, and play with these big guys in a couple of years. Uh, the total addressable market for this, for the supply chain management software, is $33 billion. So that's a good start, but we actually start by focusing on food and beverage because we think that food is the most important thing in any kind of global supply chain today. Without food, we can't work. And today, the food industry today is very inefficient. We are throwing away more than 50% of all food. We have way more food than we need in the world. Unfortunately, we cannot distribute it in an in efficient way to all people that needs it. If we can do that, or when we can do that with our solutions, the world will be a much better place. So the problems we have in global supply chain is that from, from seed to plate, from, from egg to, to plate, from farm to fork, there's a lot of names of that. The efficiency of all these different actors in a supply chain is very, very limited. Only eight, 80 or only 20% is the aggregated efficiency, which means that 80% is waste. Any supply chain today has a worse efficiency than that, more waste than 80%. It's, it's incredible. That leads as well to that one-fourth or 25% of all assets, like trucks, machines, tools, boats, anything, are standing still, not used at any given time because of this inefficiency that we have. It's tying up a lot of capital, 2.5 trillion dollars and we have this whole counterfeit industry which is by itself is gigantic in a 3 trillion dollars which is actually 3% of the world GDP is in fake counterfeit products the biggest one is actually footwear the Nike Jordan Air is the most counterfeited product in the world but we all know about olive oils, honey, uh, and all of these uh, truffles, all of these products, wines, or li like uh, the previous speaker talked about, or there is a lot of counterfeit products there as well. Just there is a whole market of empty wine bottles. So they take empty wine bottles from restaurants from nice expensive wines, 
and they are selling it and refilling it with some other things and selling that as, as the good product. <clears throat> so that's what we are trying to help with. We're not trying, we are helping with this. So we provide companies with the tools to prove their product, to prove the sustainability, to prove the provenance, where the product is coming from. Is it actually Italian olive oil? The, the quality of this product, is it actually the quality that they say? Is it ecologic? Is it uh, vegan? Every ingredients? Is it sustainable? And is it ethically sourced? So now we have got new EU laws in, in Europe, the su supply chain uh, sustainability law, where a company have to prove that, that the personnel and the people working in this uh, has good environment, is paid good, and so on. So we we provide a function that we call a digital product passport, or actually a, a smart digital product passport. So you can scan a QR code or an RFID on a product, and I'm sure you have seen this already, that there is a QR code on product. You scan it, and you come to a boring website. We can do that. That's the first step. We, we can prove, we can show some in, information about the, about the producer, some nice videos and text about where it comes from and so on. That's important. But what we add to this is the next layer where we actually prove that data. We can prove where the, data, where the product is coming from. We can prove the ingredients. We can prove the sustainability and all of that. And thanks to that, we are using the BSV, the public blockchain, we can actually prove this information to the consumers or to anyone in, in the supply chain. Then we add additional function to that. So we get a, a quality control or, or customer feedback. So if you scan a, a wine bottle and you love that wine bottle, you can now give feedback directly back to the producer of that. So we create a communication channel between the consumer and the producer, which is non-existing today, more or less. You can call customer service, but how often do you, that? Do you do that? And what do you get out of it? More or less nothing. But here you can actually get in direct contact with a wine producer, for example. And then we add a fourth layer to that, loyalty certificate. So if you really love this, this product, you can buy a loyalty certificate and get back a loyalty certificate in your phone. So like a token in your phone that you now can show to your friends and family and on social media that I'm supporting this farmer or, or this fisherman or this wine wine producer or yeah. any other organization that they want to support like UNICEF, Save the Children or something like that. But you can be sure that that money is going to where they're saying it's going. So here is an example for one of the first digital product passports that we did for a, a beer bottle in Sweden. So you can scan that one and you should get something up like over there, the digital product passport, where you see some information about the, the, the company, but also the, the provable data about this product. And there is also a link to the blockchain where you can verify that this data is actually on the blockchain. It's a very simple or, or simple example, but, but we can do a lot of more functionality. It's all up to the customer how much they want to put into this digital product passport and how much information they actually want to prove there. We have been talking to prospects that maybe not want to prove their quality because it, maybe it isn't as good as they are saying it is. So we are actually focusing a lot on, on SMEs that have very good product, but today have a problem to get out to the market with that product and actually prove it and get the right price for it. Now we can give them the tool to prove the product, get out there and get the right price. So this is the way the system is working. It's one big uh, schedule here, but... If we start from the start, so this is a supply chain from seed to, to plate and recycling. So let's see, you have, you have someone producing seeds before a farmer gets it. When they create the seed, we also create a di smart digital twin in the blockchain. So this digital twin is just a digital representation of something. In this case, a seed. It could be a representation of a wine bottle or a fish or a car or a house or whatever. We can add information to this digital twin, so data, events, attributes, relations, and so on. And when they are selling the seeds to the farmer, 
the farmer gets the seeds, of course, but the farmer also gets the digital twin. So now the farmer has proof of the quality of the seeds. Now the farmer can continue adding information about how much fertilizer, how much water, how much energy, how much diesel for the tractor and so on. And so we do in every step in the supply chain, but supply chain or the blockchain that is not a magical tool, it cannot verify information like, like a database doesn't verify information, it just stores information. But what's nice with using a public blockchain for this is that each actor here, they're actually signing their information that they put out there with a digital signature. So they are now liable for that information. So that's the first step. Then we analyze the information with machine learning to make sure that it's, it's correct or that it's, we, we put a reliability value on it. So that means that we, we cannot get rid of auditors. We need auditors in some steps in the supply chains but we can make the job much, much more easy for them and much cheaper. So they can come to a serve table with, here's all the information about this product. Now you, you just have to verify that and they can make a digital signature on that. And now you have a, a product certificate, a raw material certificate or product certificate. And we can follow it out in processing, everything that is done in processing, out in distribution, handle uh, customs documents and so on. And, and in the end there, you see this, digital product passport I was talking about that the end consumer can just scan a QR code or an RFID and get the digital product passport. And this is of course very useful for recycling and re reusability. So this creates what we call the 360 global interoperability where we enable every actor in the supply chain to, to connect with each other. And because we're using blockchain, we can do nano payments between them as well. So we can enable them to start monetizing their information so they can put a, a, a value, a monetary value on one temperature or one location and start selling that between each other. So these are some of the use cases that, that we are working on. So we have seafood, sea, seafood chain was the first one. So I'm based in, in Norway. So everybody knows about Norwegian salmons. So we started in that industry just to prove that the system is working. And it is. We are now looking into uh, starting up kosher on chain. So that's why uh, we are uh, one of the reasons we're here in New York to, to talk to some, uh, to the kosher industry. Uh, we have fashion on chain. So we have some distribute or some producers in Bangladesh using our system. Uh, Agri on chain is for our olive oil from Italy. Uh, I take API in a minute. Uh, wine on chain for, for wine industry. Halal on chain, so we are launching now in October uh, our halal on chain together with a customer in Dubai. Uh, we're looking into freight on chain. We have food and beverage, and we have sign on chain, which is like an uh, uh, elect electronic signing function. So DocuSign, uh, and the API. Of course, we are selling this system also as an API system, so uh, platform as a service. And uh, so company can use, connect their system to the blockchain. This is some of our customers and our partners. We are looking for partners. So as you see, we already partnered with Superstereo, uh, Orange, Business Service, CGI, and, and Sador. So system integrators. So we are looking for more uh, partners and also technical partners. So like partners who are experts in, in IoT uh, uh, and other systems. Our business model is subscription fees. So uh, depending on how many transactions people are doing, our company are doing, they are paying different tiers there. And we can add a lot of uh, ad additional service level agreements and so on. So talking about our competi competition here. So most or all of our competitors, there is a lot of companies trying to do global supply chain traceability and management. They are all down in the left side here. They're using either databases or private blockchains, or they're using like Ethereum or some, some blockchain that doesn't scale or, and is very expensive. So we're actually the only one in the world at the moment that are using the open public blockchain to get a very, very scalable, very, very cost efficient and the probably most secure system in the world. Uh, this is the team. We are a small team of eight people in Norway and Happy to take any questions about that. Thank, Thank you, Stefan. I think we have time for one quick question if anyone has something. 
Thanks for that. Are you ready to do something in commodity markets uh, like mining to take one for random? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Uniswap platform is usable in all supply chain or any kind of supply chain. If that's food or, or minerals or wine or, or cars or we just started in uh, in food, but you, as you saw, we have garments, we have uh, uh, construction, we have um, physical art that we're tracing or helping a company trace. So, yes, absolutely, open for all industries. Let's give a hand for Stefan, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.